Hello? Test. Making my way downtown. Walking fast. Welcome, Connor. Hi, Darren. How are you? Yeah, very good. How are you? Ah, oh, not too bad. So, what course did you do, Connor? I did uh, energy engineering. Where did you do energy engineering? In UCC. Nice. University College Cork. Yeah. How did you find it? I loved it. Yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a bumpy road to get there, but once <laughs> I got into it in second year, I mean, I'm really glad now that I did it. A bumpy road? What do you mean by a bumpy road? Uh, well, yeah, I repeated my leaving cert twice because I didn't really know what I was doing. How is energy engineering structured? Yeah, in general, I mean, when I did it, it was a bit different, but nowadays it's general entry, so you get you go into first year and it's all engineering. So you get an introductory module to each of the four disciplines in the second term. And the four disciplines are? The four disciplines, electrical and electronic, processing, chemical, civil, and then, of course, my old favorite, energy. <laughs> yeah, so you, get the, you pick two preferences at the end of the year after you've had a bit of an experience with them, mm. and then based on your grades, you should hopefully get your first preference. Yeah, and then third year, you've um, getting more into detailed energy modules, so we did actual building design and then looking at generating energy. In second year, you learn like fluid mechanics, how does water flow? And then you learn how to actually harvest that energy in third year. Then you get the option for placement at the end. So that's a five month work placement. The energy one is, I mean, I think it's particularly good. I got to go to New York for five months. Nice. Because I was making like $1,500 a week. So <laughs> money was just a week. This. Yeah, 27,000 grand I made in five months. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no swearing. Can I say that? Is Hello. And final year, this is obviously the most important year. It's very specific to energy. You look at the wind energy module, you've a module on solar PV, yeah. you've uh, ocean energy. And then the final year project is probably the most important thing. It's the equivalent of a dissertation, essentially. Mm. I mean, certainly for John, my partner was, he wrote up 32,000 words. I think they've put a word cap of 15,000 now. 32,000 words. <laughs> that would take a long time to write. Yeah, and a long time to you read. You taught English paper too was bad. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of maths and engineering, of course. There is yeah. a huge amount of maths, yeah. I mean, if you're not good at maths, you probably shouldn't do engineering. Yeah. <laughs> Even still doing my PhD now, I keep going back to just the fundamental laws of physics you need to know. <laughs> but, um, we need an external camera. <laughs> yeah. That's not going into the video anyway. Oh, this is going to be tight. <laughs> Whew. Nearly had our first carpool college cross crash there. You got a badass over here. I failed first year twice, and yeah. I managed to go into second year. And because I just really loved what I was doing all of a sudden, mm. it was fine. I could still do pretty much the same level of socializing, but I'd just make myself get out of bed and go to college no matter what state yeah. I was in. <laughs> I topped the class in second year, I suppose, which is good to note. Congratulations! <laughs> would like that have been like one of your main pieces of advice you'd like give someone to do something that you're really yeah interested passionate in? about? Once you find that, you know that's huge. See, that's, yeah, that's what it is. Just <laughs> yeah, it is like it's all you know, about your passion. Like yeah, getting yourself out of bed eight o'clock for that nine o'clock lecture. You know, <laughs> if you're not that interested, you're gonna say. But what was your favorite part about engineering in the end? Um, well, for the energy, it's just I mean a bit of meaning, hopefully. Mm. You know the part of the solution rather than the problem when it comes I was always a bit naive I guess before I got into energy when it comes to climate change and that I thought it was a yeah. distant problem but the more I learn about it the more stark yeah. I see the situation is and engineering is a bit of a commitment I suppose yeah. compared to other degrees because there is that like it's a full time job yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a full time job <laughs> if you're not in the lecture you should be in the lab doing your work you know I always found the assignments much more useful than the lecturers yeah the lecturers not the lecturers <laughs> <laughs> don't even think about messing with me what are the job prospects like after you graduate? Like specifically me now, I'm doing a PhD. So, I mean, I'm pretty much geared myself towards uh, life in academia, which would be yeah. doing a postdoc or else trying to get into lecturing. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, I might probably try to look at starting my own company. Nice. <laughs> You're not a real doctor, Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to that moment now on an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a doctor here? Yes, step aside. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want your plane to be run more yeah, efficiently? Yeah. <laughs> The moment we're undersubscribed in terms of graduates, there isn't enough energy engineers. It's the biggest expanding market, I would say, between 2020 and 2030, with the amount of growth that we need in terms of wind energy, solar, and I mean, the whole energy system is huge. Yeah. Say so a starting salary would be around 31,000 euros, yeah. and then from there, like you kind of go up then, depending yeah. on the company. I mean, it depends on the company, obviously, they have different pay scales. Yeah. Would you say, in particular, that there's like a lot of opportunities for, say, females going, going to engineering? There is, yeah. I mean, I've heard you can get a grant for a laptop if you're a female engineer, some sort really? of sponsorship program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's the companies are all desperate to get female engineers now. They're trying to get their balances up. Yeah. Support there in terms of scholarships if you're a female engineer. Yeah. 
Would you say that like you're limited to engineering after doing an engineering degree? Oh, no, I mean, yeah. I think you'd find out at most of the higher up scale, when you get to the top of the corporate ladders, it's an engineering would be a baseline degree and then there's a yeah. master's in business or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so like a lot of people would do engineering as a base degree to kind of like step yeah. forward into something else. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a really good foundation now for the problem solving, working with a team. You were stressing earlier, it was like to follow your passion. Follow your passion, yeah. Figure out what you want to do, you know. And a lot of people would probably go for a course because the money can be out of it. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, if you love what you're doing enough, like you're going yeah. to end up working the same amount of money and yeah. loving your job. Yeah, I mean, I get paid half of what I would get paid in industry now to do research. Yeah. It's, it's worth it. I mean, yeah. I'm only burning my half. Yeah, it is, it is <laughs> worth it. Like. Money is not happiness, you know. There you go. Money is not happening. It's actually inversely. On your wall. Be sure to follow the gooks on Instagram. Oh, uh, yeah. Ash. <laughs> <laughs>